In this video, we're going to talk about five built-in Home Assistant integrations that can really help simplify your automations and scripts, and perhaps even get you closer to living in that true smart home. And chances are, there's at least one of these you're not using today. So stick around because we're about to automate some boring stuff. Welcome back to Slacker Labs. My name is Jeff. Today, we're talking about five built-in Home Assistant integrations you may not be using, and we're gonna go through how they could help you on your smart home journey. If you're looking to build that true smart home that relies on automation, then these integrations could do some of the heavy lifting for you. By performing math, eliminating repetition, and even providing some of that much needed context that could take your automations from just flipping switches to actually deciding which switches they need to flip, now, of course, we're only covering five here, so this is not meant to be an exhaustive list, and this is probably not even the best or the top five integrations built into Home Assistant. But I do find these five integrations to be quite useful in my automations, so I'm hoping that you might find some use in them as well. So with that, let's cover the five built-in integrations that could come in handy when building a smart home with Home Assistant. Okay, first up is the time of day sensor. This sensor on the surface may seem a bit meh. After all, you can trigger automations based on time or the position of the sun already. But the time of day sensor allows you to define sections of the day that make sense to you. And in my setup, I currently have six of these defined. And unfortunately, you can't define this via the UI. So you're looking at raw unfiltered YAML here. You would add this bit of code to your binary underscore sensor dot YAML file if you have one of those or under your binary underscore sensor colon heading in your configuration.yaml. Platform is TOD for times of day, and the first two here are simply based on the position of the sun. Night I defined as the period between sunset and sunrise, and day is the time between sunrise and sunset. You could also include an offset here if, for example, you want to include 30 minutes prior to sunset in what you call night but you could also define it based on time. So in my house, quiet time is defined as 9 p.m. until 6 a.m. And if you've already caught on, these can overlap. All this integration does is create binary sensors for each one of these definitions, and they'll be either on or off. So binary underscore sensor dot quiet underscore time will be on between 9 p.m. and 6 a.m. And from there, I can use this as a condition for my notifications to either not allow general audible notifications to occur when quiet time is on, or perhaps simply adjust the volume when I'm playing the messages based on the time of day. Again, you can define whatever makes sense to you here. Maybe you want to define a portion of the day as workout so that you can have Home Assistant trigger your workout routine when that binary sensor turns on. Or you could define the time period during the day in which your kids are at school, allowing a home assistant to have some context of when school's in session. But I find this sensor to be really useful as conditions in a choose action of an automation. And the times of day sensor allows me to define sections of the day in more general terms as opposed to using specific times. I almost didn't include the workday sensor since it's closely related to the times of day sensor. But this one comes in handy when you want to automatically adjust when your automations fire based on whether it's a workday or a non-workday. And the workday sensor is aware of holidays in your region, so you don't have to worry about a separate holiday sensor. To take advantage of this sensor though, you're once again going to have to sling some YAML. This workday sensor is a binary sensor, so it'll be located in the same place as the times of day sensor. Platform is workday, and you'll need to define a region and a providence so it knows your holidays. And you should define your workdays since you may not work Monday through Friday. Now, you may have more holidays than the official ones, so you have the ability to define custom holidays using either the date or the name. And you can exclude certain holidays if, for whatever reason, you have to work on specific holidays. After that, restart, and you'll have a workday sensor that will be on for the days that you've defined as long as it's not a holiday. This sensor is perfect for using as a condition in an automation or even as a choose condition, allowing you to write an alarm automation that only triggers on actual workdays. Or to customize a morning notification so that it only provides traffic to you 
on days that you're having to go into the office. Again, not a super wow integration here, but it does allow you to write smarter automations and let Home Assistant make decisions based on whether it's a work day or not, meaning you don't have to go in and manually adjust your automations if you want to change one based on those conditions. I can't remember if we've talked about this little helper in my past videos, but it is one of the first helpers I started to leverage when I started looking for ways to write smarter automations. Setting up this helper is easy, and you can do that in your configuration menu under helpers. Just choose whether you want to use it to store a date or a time or both. In my smart home, I have quite a few automations that trigger at specific times. Now, I could have hard-coded those times in my automations, but if I wanted to adjust that automation later, I would have to edit the automation. And frankly, that's boring stuff and not easy for other members in my house to do. So in cases where I wanted an automation to trigger at a specific time, I used an input date time as the trigger and then added it to my UI so that making changes doesn't require a lot of effort. In fact, you can do it right on the dashboard like here on this config page I've set up in Home Assistant. All of the date times you see here on this page are used as triggers for automations. For example, my kid has two different bedtimes based on whether he has school the next day or not. And when we need to change his bedtime, we just adjust it here. And then the automation triggers at that specific time. Now, of course, this means that this automation fires twice every day. But with the choose action, I can define another condition. So if it's not school tomorrow, it just skips that action at that time. And in some cases, I have an automation that's only job is to look at the criteria and then set the input date time to the correct time each day. For example, here's an automation I have that sets the good morning time, which handles the lighting each day. Here it's looking at whether it's a school day, and if it's not, then it checks to see if it's a work day. And if it's not that either, then it sets the time to the last option. This means that the trigger time for the morning lighting automation changes based on the calendar and workday sensor, and it requires zero input from us. Of course, all of this takes extra work when you're setting up your automations, because you would have to define an input date time for each of these automations. But at the end, it allows you to write smarter automations that require less effort in the future to update, and you did it all using built-in tools. Now we're getting into more informational integrations and the math portion of this video. And the next two integrations complement each other nicely. First up, history stats can let you know how long an entity was in a particular state for a period of time. So if you want to know how long your HVAC ran over the last 24 hours, or how many times your front door was opened in the last week, this is the sensor you need. The data it can provide breaks down into three groups. Time, which is the amount of time it was in the state. Ratio, which is the percentage of time it was in the state divided by the length of time it was monitoring. And count, which is the number of times the entity changed to the state you're tracking. Setting it up can be a bit confusing, so let's walk through it. And just to keep things basic and not in the typical Slacker Labs overly complicated, I'm going to use the documentation. Setting up this sensor will be defined in your sensor section or your sensor.yaml, whichever one you have. There's no UI option here. Platform is history stats. Name is what you want this sensor to be called. Entity ID is the name of the entity you want to track. State is the state you want to track. For example, on or maybe running. Type is one of the three types we mentioned before. And then you need at least two of the following a start time, an end time, and duration. These will define the time period you're monitoring. Thankfully, the docs provide quite a few examples of time periods, and my guess is most of what you are looking to do could be found here and just copied, like yesterday, today, or last 30 days. And if not, hopefully you got enough from these examples to roll your own. Once you have that set up and you've restarted, you get some stats. For example, in my system I have a washer time that tells me how long the washer has ran in the last seven days, so that Home Assistant can tweet it out because I'm a geek. And more recently, front door motion, which counts the number of times the front door motion sensor switched on, which is useful, but what if I wanted to know how many times the front door motion sensor came on in the last 15 minutes? That's where the next integration comes in. 
I think the utility meter integration on this list might be the most underutilized integration in Home Assistant. The utility meter integration allows you to create a sensor that monitors power usage over a period of time. At least, I think that's what its intended purpose was based on its name. And you could totally use it for that. To set this up, simply define the utility meter section in your configuration.yaml. Then you need a source, which will be the sensor or entity you want to track, and cycle. Cycle is the time period, and it can be quarterly hour all the way up to yearly. What makes this useful is that it does math for you. Let's say you have a smart plug that reports power consumption in kilowatt hours and just keeps a running total. So every time you look at the sensor, you get the total power this plug has used since the beginning of time, or at least until its buffer ran out and the counter went back to zero. But what if you wanted to know how much power this plug has used in the last week so that Home Assistant can let you know if it's using more than the previous week? Just set up a sensor that looks at your power sensor and define the cycle or time period you want to track. But since we're doing this in Home Assistant, we don't have to exactly follow the rules. In fact, in Smart Home, there are more guidelines than actual rules. The front door motion counter we created with history stats can now be made more useful by pointing this integration at it. And we can get the hourly count of the motion at the front door. If you have a local rain gauge integrated directly into Home Assistant, this integration can give you a daily and weekly rainfall sensor. If you wanted to track how much power your washing machine used every day, define it as daily washing machine power and set the cycle to daily. This integration, like some of the others, is not based on your history data though, so it will start from zero when you add it. But once it's run for two cycles, you'll get both the current period and the last period. From there, you could create automations that trigger based on large changes in sensor value between the current cycle and the previous cycle. And you wouldn't have to do any of that math, Home Assistant would do it for you. Or perhaps just use that data as context to make your automation smarter. In any case, I hope this brief look at these five integrations gets you a little closer to the smart home of your dreams. If you found this video useful, hit that like button and consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already for more smart home content like this. Let me know in the comments if any of these integrations sparked new ideas for automations in your smart home. And as always, thanks for taking time out of your smart home projects to watch mine. Until next time, go automate the boring stuff.